The Space Shuttle program was announced in 1972 by President Nixon, ushering in an exciting new era of space travel. The program was the fourth human spaceflight program carried out by NASA. NASA promised a launch rate of 48 shuttles per year and reusable parts to help with efficiency and cost, making this program vastly different than its predecessors, Gemini and Apollo. While the shuttle program proved triumphant in space travel through technological and social advancements, it also experienced horrific tragedies in the process, most notably the loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger and its crew. On April 12, 1981, the first Space Shuttle successfully launched with two crew members on board. Fifty-four and a half hours later, the orbiter safely re-entered Earth. This mission demonstrated the first functionally reusable spacecraft as the orbiter safely glided down and the two solid rocket boosters were recovered from the ocean for reuse. Although the external tank was expendable, the mission still demonstrated how two out of the three main components of the shuttle were reusable. This gained lots of attention and support from the public, and with this positive publicity, the program prospered and gained great success in space exploration. The program created an orbiter that could carry seven crew members, set the first American woman and African American in space, and achieved many other technological firsts. But after the 11th mission, the public began losing interest, and NASA wasn't meeting their promised launch rate. NASA needed to find a way to bolster the program's public support, so on August 27, 1984, President Ronald Reagan announced a new plan. Today I am directing NASA to begin a search in all of our elementary and secondary schools and to choose as the first citizen passenger in the history of our space program one of America's finest, a teacher. For the 25th shuttle mission, a teacher would be sent to space. The goals of the Teacher in Space project were to increase the public interest in the space shuttle program, demonstrate spaceflight reliability, and get students interested in space. Over 11,000 teachers applied nationwide, and on July 19, 1985, Krista McAuliffe, a social studies teacher at Concord High School in New Hampshire, was selected to be the first teacher in space. Krista McAuliffe took a year off from teaching to train for a mission in early 1986, and she would board the Challenger 510 with other crew members for a seven-day mission. Six outstanding leaders in their field accompanied Krista McAuliffe during the mission. Francis Scobie was a respected pilot and was the commander of the mission. Michael Smith was a NASA astronaut selected as a space shuttle pilot. Judith Resnick, the second American woman in orbit, was a mission specialist. Ronald McNair, the second African American in orbit, was also a mission specialist. Ellison Onizuka, an educated engineer, was the final mission specialist on board. And Gregory Jarvis was an engineer who was selected to be the mission's payload specialist. With a diverse crew, the program had regained its media coverage. This was NASA's chance to redeem the space shuttle program, and the pressure for success was onerous. The launch of the Challenger was originally set for January 22, 1986, though due to several technical and weather issues, the launch date was moved to January 28. There was also a delay on the day of the launch due to ice accumulation. But at 11.15 a.m., the ice inspection was complete and all crew members were ready. The launch of the Challenger finally began at 11.38 a.m. at Cape Canaveral, Florida. I'm so excited to be here. Um, we watched Columbia go over the Houston area this morning, and that was a thrill. I don't think any teacher has ever been more ready to have two lessons in my life. I've been preparing these in September, and I just hope everybody tunes in on day four now to watch the teacher teaching from space. The launch was broadcasted live on CNN for everyone to watch, and with the teacher on board, there were many eyes on the Challenger. So after much anticipation, the public all witnessed the 25th shuttle launch. Liftoff of the 25th space shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. History was being made, and it was looking like a successful launch. But then, tragedy struck. Be able to get off. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, 9 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 7 nautical miles. Seventy-three seconds into flight, Space Shuttle Challenger exploded, which resulted in the loss of all seven crew members. Americans all over the nation watching the live broadcast witnessed a national loss. People were stunned and horrified, 
from the children watching the broadcast at school to the elderly watching at home. It was truly a tragic event that was beyond everyone's imagination. It was difficult to accept the reality of the tragedy, but later that evening, President Ronald Reagan broadcasted a speech to the nation addressing the loss of the crew and shuttle. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Shortly after the disaster, Executive Order 12546, dated February 3, 1986, established the Presidential Commission on the Space Shuttle Challenger. The chairman of the commission was William P. Rogers, former United States Attorney General, and the vice chairman was Neil A. Armstrong, former astronaut. The commission's purpose was to identify what happened and develop recommendations to prevent another tragedy from happening. So the commission set off on their investigation and the space shuttle program went on hiatus. Through computer-enhanced visual analysis, the commission laid out a timeline of what happened. At 0.6 seconds, black smoke could be seen being developed near the right booster's aft fuel joint. This raised red flags as further inspection showed that multiple smoke puffs began to appear at 0.8 seconds. Then around 59 seconds, flames appeared where the smoke had occurred, and then at 73 seconds, the spacecraft broke apart and fire spread rapidly, leading to the devastating explosion. The commission investigated all technical issues that could have caused the disaster. Ultimately, it was determined that the loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger was caused by a joint failure between the two lower segments of the right solid rocket motor. The joint contained an O-ring, and its purpose was to prevent hot gases from leaking through during the propellant burn of the rocket motor. As further analysis went on, various tests were done on the O-rings, and it was concluded that the O-ring's failure was the cause of the disaster. The commission had found that the most influential factor that hindered the O-ring's performance was temperature. On the day of the launch, the temperature during liftoff was 36 degrees Fahrenheit, which was 15 degrees below the lowest temperature of any previous launch. There was also ice buildup on the launch pad that day and the night before. These cold temperatures decreased the elasticity of the O-rings, which led to the failed seal. The direct relation between the O-ring and temperature was demonstrated by Dr. Richard Feynman, who was a member of the commission during one of the hearings. I took this stuff that I got out of your seal, and I put it in ice water. And I discovered that when you put some pressure on it for a while and then undo it, it doesn't stretch back, it stays the same dimension. In other words, for a few seconds at least, and more seconds than that, there's no resilience in this particular material when it's at a temperature of 32 degrees. I believe that has some significance for our problem. However, the O-ring wasn't the only cause of the disaster. A contributing cause was the rush decision to launch. The commission examined the chain of decisions and found that the process was extremely flawed. Engineers had expressed their concern about the O-ring and there was a recommendation that the temperature should be 53 degrees or greater at launch. The engineers had even advised against launching. Despite that, managers went against the engineers' concerns and approved the launch. Managers found that the potential backlash was more concerning than engineers claiming something that wasn't fully proven at the time. This miscommunication ultimately led to the loss of the crew and shuttle. The Commission had made recommendations for changes in design, communication, safety regulations, and flight rate. These recommendations were followed through by NASA and the Space Shuttle program grew stronger. Despite the Challenger tragedy and its setbacks, the Shuttle program recovered and launched 87 successful missions until the 2003 Columbia disaster, where the Space Shuttle disintegrated upon re-entering Earth's atmosphere, killing all seven crew members. Although the Challenger was a great tragedy, it was one of the most significant events in NASA's history that taught lessons which influenced the culture and technology of space travel. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us for the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye, and slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God.